Hey there, interwebs. I hope you're all doing well. So uh, this is a video that I did not expect to be filming right now, considering that uh, I actually should be packing because I'm traveling tomorrow to go and visit family and I've got none of my packing done. So this is some last minute, uh, last minute packing shenanigans that are going to happen here in the next little bit. But uh, James Summerton recently released an apology video and quite frankly, having watched the whole thing, which I should not have, um, it really, really deeply upset me uh, and angered me. And I kind of want to talk about it, not just to vent my anger and frustration, uh, because if this was just going to be a venting session, I do it privately amongst friends, but because James Summerton did so much demonstrable damage and, and, and harm to not just me specifically. In fact, I'm, in my opinion, other people may disagree. I've had other people say, no, there's worse, whatever. In my opinion, I'm small potatoes to the other people that he harmed in terms of his plagiarism, the, uh, uh, you know, the delegitimizing of the asexual community, um, his misogyny, whether it was intentional or not in his videos, the outright disinformation that he spread. And even more specifically in my mind, behind those direct harms, the harm he did to his audience, not just taking their money, but to the fact that, you know, he plagiarized from the queer community, especially from a lot of dead uh, queer authors as well, um, who died from like HIV who are activists in the field and and he was doing videos for a younger queer audience not exclusively but in a large amount who could have had access to these larger parts of the queer community or queer history that he denied to his audience um, access to uh, by not even just citing them um, in, in a time where queer people and trans people especially are under attack at the moment uh, being able to find community being able to find resources being able to find just the words and and the people to look up to um, in our community is deeply important um, and to deny people that I, I think is 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 an unspeakable harm at the moment um, beyond all the very clear like monetizable or, or you know uh, direct harms that he caused to people directly and I don't mean to minimize those either but it just all goes together so James has caused a lot of harm um, and frankly he people deserve an apology frankly this video was not that and I, I just need to discuss why it, it really, really perturbed me in a lot of ways. So the first thing that, and the first thing that I guess I really need to address up front is the fact that he starts off his video talking about how he uh, just got out of the hospital for, and content warning here, um, attempting suicide, attempting to harm himself. Um, and frankly, starting a video off that way is emotionally manipulative in a lot of different ways. I'm not even going to question whether or not he is, you know, truthful in that feeling um, or if that did happen. Um, you know, I will take him at his word that it is. But even if that is the case, starting off your video, that should be an apology video, crying, saying, I almost tried to die by suicide, I was in the hospital, in a video that should be an apology, should be focused on apologizing to the people you harmed, takes away that chance for the victims of your your actions to be centered. And instead it makes it about you. And I'm not trying to delegitimize his emotions, you know, but if he is feeling that way, if he is in that mental state, and quite frankly, I can understand if he is, he became the villain of the week, the month, the year online. And while yes, he absolutely deserved to be called out for his harm, that has to be really, really shitty to feel. I mean, I'm someone who's been harassed by many people. I got harassed by JK Rowling around this time last year, and that nearly destroyed my mental health um, for shit that I know was bullshit because it was JK Rowling's absolute transphobia. Um, leading her followers to attack me. But I know that it sucks, um, deserved or not. And so he quite possibly is in that place. And if he is, you owe it to the people that you are going to try to apologize to, to, to take the time to be in a state where you can focus on them and actually apologize to them. If you are not in a state to make that like emotional labor and restitution to the people that you harmed, then you shouldn't be making a video right now. Go and take the time. Take the time in private 
to be able to be in a place to do what you need to do to make restitution to those who you harmed. Because I get it. I get it if you're not in a place to be able to do the emotional labor to make that restitution. But you owe it to your victims to when you do speak about the harm that you caused to center them. So get to a place where you can do that. And if that takes time, that takes time. And yes, people say you need to do it right now. But frankly, take the time you need to be able to do what is going to help everyone heal as best they can from the harm that you caused. You owe it to them and you owe it to yourself, which James did not do here. Secondly, people are going to question the validity of this because of his history of lying, of, of plagiarizing, of making disinformation. By starting off a video saying, I've been suicidal, and making the video sort of have this framing as about what happened to you in this situation, it's going to make people, whether it's true or not, question whether it's actually you actually feel this way or if you're just doing it to get sympathy. Being honest, people are going to do that. I've already seen people doing that. And so if it is dishonest, fuck off. Fuck you for doing that manipulation. But even if it's not, it's going to cause you more harm because you're going to see people questioning the validity of your earnestness. And so that's going to affect your mental health either, too. So either way, it's bad. And if it isn't earnest, and it's just this way to try and stop the bleeding, to try and, you know, try and save your career or something like that, um, to gain the sympathy points, then uh, f f fuck all the way off. It also should be said that starting off his video this way is also going to paint those who made videos about his plagiarism like H Bomber Guy or his disinformation like Todd in the Shadows or his just generally crappy behavior like myself and the Ace Couples and numerous others. Um, it paints them, us, as the ones who pushed him to this point. Um, I've already seen people on Twitter and X saying, you know, you know, whether they intended to or not, Harry pushed a man into this mental state, H referring to H Bomber Guy. Um, which is not the case. H Bomber Guy pointed out the shitty actions that James did. They hold no responsibility for this. In fact, even in H Bomber Guy's video, he said, do not harass James Somerton. And look, I'm going to be very fair. Like I said, he became the villain of the week um, and got probably a shit ton of harassment. And to be clear, no one should face harassment, period. Full stop. He should be held accountable. Harassment is absolutely gross. Um, and uh, it happens in our day and age, and it is unacceptable. I don't even want to be those people that say, you know, but it's just something that happens nowadays. You got to do it. It's like, no, it is absolutely and completely unacceptable. But again, if your goal is to apologize to those who you did harm to, you need to understand that you need to be responsible with how you discuss this, this harm that is an offshoot of your own actions. I'm not saying it's deserved. I'm not saying you should go through this, but you should be aware of if you're trying to make restitutions, what this is going to do to the people who are trying to push back against your harm. And this is only going to vilify those people. But as H Bomber Guy talked about in his own video, James has a pattern of this. There were people who accused him of plagiarism, who uh, then James said people, uh, they had sent people to harass him or they had harassed him when in actuality they had uh, just pointed out his plagiarism. Hell, it, it happened to me. I pointed out that he said that people, that, that there were no queer creators or people creating queer content on Nebula. And I said, hey, look, I'm there. Maggie Mae Fish is there. Abigail Thorne is there. Um, Princess Weeks is there. You know, numerous other queer creators are there. Cat Black, I can go on. I could name a full freaking list of people. Um, and then he claimed that my audience was going to harass him. Like that was his defense mechanism. And again, maybe he faced some level of harassment, but it's like, if you are going to own up to the harm that you caused, be aware of how you're also talking about or going to frame the people who are trying in the first place to point out what harm you did. Um, and that's not to excuse the harassment. It's not to deny his experience or his emotions, but it is also to say an apology video is meant to center your victims. And by doing this, it is not only not doing that, it is having an offshoot effect of bringing um, anger to the people who <laughs> pointed out your shittiness.
And that gets into this next point, is that the video really isn't an apology. He actually spends a lot of the time of the video um, talking about how he wants to make up for things so that he can continue making videos. He says throughout the video that he's going to restart his Patreon. He's going to, he wants to, he, he repeatedly states he wants to make videos again. He even at one point describes a video that he still wants to make as if he's pitching it as like, well, if I get to make videos, you'll get this um, sort of thing. And it comes across as like all he can do in his head is, you know, I don't even want to get into his head. It, 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 it just comes across as, as, just only worried about how things affect you and it makes the center about you and even tries to like put this thing of like you'll get these things if you continue to support me you know uh, out there um for people to be who, who who may still like have an attachment emotional attachment to him because people attach to him and and i understand why he made vid he made videos with good points in them whether they were his or not um uh, and, and people latched on to that. And so to use that to say, hey, you can still get more from me is just gross. It's absolutely gross. Speaking on those things, you know, his mention of like this Patreon thing, he said he's doing reactivating it so that, you know, people can uh, quit out of it. But not a lot of a lot of people may not even know that he will reactivate it. May not watch this video. May be so angry about it that he they're not going to check. Um, and then they might get charged at the beginning of the month. What you should do is just leave it off. Never reactivate it again. That's what you. Sh that's what you should just say. You say I'm never going to reactivate it again. The other thing that he said to he was going to do was reactivate, or he wants to do at the very least. And this seems to be a play to be able to see if that test the waters, if that's possible, is to reactivate the video so he can give the money back to um, the people that he plagiarized from. And it's like, no, you should not be getting any money. Should not be going through you at all to be able to get that money back. You, what you, sh like, it, those videos, like, are not properly accredited, even if you put in the description, like, it just, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, and the money, you should be getting no money. And we should not be trusting on some honor system that you will give the money back. What you should do is delete all those videos and make a comprehensive list of all the people that you plagiarized and put that out there. Um, you do the work to do that, because I'm sure he didn't keep a detailed list of all the people that he plagiarized. He should go back and backtrack, do all the work, because people right now are trying to figure out how, um, uh, if he plagiarized from them, because H Bomber guy has put together a fund in order to uh, pay back using the money from his video uh, to be able to pay back the creators that James plagiarized from, um, or pay some of the money to the people that he plagiarized from. So what he should do is try to help make that list. Throughout that, also, by the way, he downplays a bunch of other things. He says at one point, he's like, there are there's still some videos that weren't plagiarized from. I have very, you know, maybe that's true. Maybe there were videos that he didn't plagiarize at all to make. But I, I have a hard time b believing that or being able to trust that. So it comes across to a degree as like, trust me, there's totally some, I did some good work, like, beyond this. Um, again, I can't know, and there's no way I can know because your plagiarism has destroyed my trust in you to ever do that. Not to mention, he doesn't really go in deeply to any of the uh, allegations against him. Not, he mentions H Bomber Guy's video and the plagiarism, but he also doesn't mention Todd in the Shadows video, where Todd in the Shadows like quite literally goes through all of the active disinformation um, that he put in his videos, just like complete mistakes or issues or just wrong, flat, wrong, made up information that he put into his videos, um, doesn't address that at all. Um, he also, by the way, mentions that he's there's other YouTubers out there lying about him, which by the way, uh, I made a video about him. I have receipts for the things that I said about him. I didn't say that much that couldn't be proven by just looking at Twitter, but the few things that, you know, if he ever wants to question me on, I, I have proof of what I've said. The point is, the point of him saying that is not to like allude to me specifically or allude to anyone specifically. The point of him saying there are YouTubers out there lying about me is intent in, intentionally to not name names because he, will then put this like seed of doubt in his audience's mind that anyone besides H Bomber guy which he says yes H Bomber guy was correct though he was the extent of my plagiarism wasn't as bad as H Bomber guy alludes to um he even like talks about telefilms which we'll get to in a minute um 
But uh, but he says, you know, there's other YouTubers lying. It's it's meant to have this like kernel of doubt that when someone else goes out and finds another video uh, or someone talking about um, James Somerton, whether it be Dan Olson's discussion of like his money spending uh, habits with his with his cameras and stuff, or the Ace Couple, which is a wonderful asexual uh, YouTube channel discussing how James's words against the asexual community. You know, regardless if it's any of those videos, now people might have a kernel of doubt. It's like, are they lying about him? He didn't say. I don't know. So no one, no, they can't trust anybody if they put any stock in his words, which they shouldn't at this point. But that's the goal of that vagueness. If you have issues with with somebody's like claims against you, say who they are, and 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 make your case. Um, but he doesn't. He also. <laughs> You know, speaking of the Ace Couple, you know, the Ace Couple did a wonderful video talking about, you know, his his issues with discussing asexuality. And in his apology video, James says at one point, you know, I, I am sorry to any asexual people who felt delegitimized by my words. Um, again, not actually taking ownership. He's not saying I'm sorry for making people feel delegitimized. Um, he's saying, you know, I'm sorry that they felt that way. You know, and again, not claiming ownership of his actions because, you know, whether or not that was his intent, um, it was his effect. And especially in these cases, I'm not going to completely say intent doesn't matter. It sometimes does, but it definitely doesn't matter more than your effect. And the effect here is big, especially against an asex the asexual community, who is, which is a community that is very often uh, misunderstood um, and, and, and harmed quite literally because of that misinformation about them. And it behooves you to get that right. And especially even if you don't get it right to listen to criticism from that community. I fucked up things about the asex community and, you know, my co-writer Aronach, who's openly talked about being asexual, has corrected me. Thankfully, it's often in like a script phase where I mention asexuality and Aronach comes in and is like, nope, this isn't right. And we discuss it because I try to, you know, get readers on my work to make sure that my work uh, is, you know, not going to harm anyone. But, you know, if, if and when I ever do do that publicly in a video, I will Will own it and listen to criticism after the fact um, and hopefully try to delete or take down the video if it is you know at that level of, of harm um, where that needs to be the case but he doesn't really take ownership of that not only that in his very next sentence he says I'm sorry for those who felt that way also my co-writer Nick uh, was a is asexual um, and, and and starts to basically kind of have like, well, my best friend is asexual. And he also alludes to earlier, it's like, I lost my best friend in this. It's like, I'm sorry that you lost your best friend, Nick, but like, you kind of deserve it because of this. And I'm, this isn't about you. It is telling to me that every single option that he offered up as a way to make restitution within this video that he framed as like part of making amends would also have a side benefit of benefiting him or even a direct benefit of benefiting him like for example his one argument was oh, i'll turn back on the videos and give the money to the people who i plagiarized uh number one that would also potentially help him if he's able to gain subscribers and gain traction and find a new audience that hadn't heard of him which is very unlikely given the youtube economy but who knows uh he definitely can't it can't do anything but help him gain more subscribers at this point um and he'll make money off of it and we just have to trust him that he's giving it to all the people he plagiarized and not just just taking some for himself. Um, so that there's there's that element of it. Again, maybe that's not his intent. Maybe he's earnest, but that's like, th there's no way to like protect against that. The other thing he does is he says like, oh, I'll turn back on my Patreon uh, so that people can quit my Patreon, but there may be people who miss it. And so he will potentially make some money when they are charged at the beginning of the year. So that will have a side benefit to him. Meanwhile, at least as of right now, as of this recording, maybe that's just changed. He hasn't sent a message to his patrons that he's going to reactivate it to notify them of this. So that's curious to me. Again, maybe that has changed by the time this video goes out. And then he also argues, hey, I want to still make cool videos. I still want to benefit the queer community. Isn't this a cool idea? Here's a pitch for a video that I really, really, really want to make. Then that would also have the benefit of you know, benefiting his career and letting his career continue going as is, as if nothing, nothing happened. And then he also mentions, as I said before, Telos Films, which he says totally isn't a scam and that he would message the people who paid him money to, uh, to explain the situation. No mention of refunds, no mention of getting any money back. Like, even if it wasn't a scam, which again is questionable given all the evidence at this point, but even if it wasn't, I have to assume there are going to be people who gave him money, um, who want, who feel 
like they want to take their money back and he should offer refunds. Regardless of if his intent is still to make those films, even if it wasn't a scam, um, he should offer that. That's a thing he should do, but there's no mention of that at all. So all the things that he proffers up as potential uh, ways to make amends also either have a side benefit to him or he doesn't even open up the possibility to allow people to, uh, you know, make some money back from what they gave him. Uh, and no mention at any point of, you know, paying anyone back uh, from the money he already has. He sort of makes claims that, you know, he spent a lot of it, that, you know, he doesn't make as much money as people have mathematically found out um, about him. Um, and, you know, he, he he, he just tossed too much for his rent. So, like, he, just, he doesn't even, even make an offered plan of paying people back um, at any point. Like, even if he can't pay back everything, uh, which I don't expect he could, um, there are things you can do to pay people back, like sell your camera that you paid for that. I don't know. It's just... It, it, there are ways to offer up ways to make some level of amends and restitution that don't also have a side effect of benefiting you in some way, shape, or form. It just, it really upsets me. It really upsets me. And, I'm, and, and, and this is coming across just like very angry. And, and I, I, under, I know that I, it's understandable, but there's just a part of me too that's like, this is just bad for James. Like, Again, I keep coming back to this thing of like, I want to under be understanding of this fact that yeah, you know, he may be in that really horrible mental state. I, 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 I he, he quite possibly is. But all this is going to do is make people question the validity of that state, um, and also just like reopen like everyone talking. I'm doing it right now, <laughs> you know. Uh, just talking about him, and it's, I'm sure it's not going to be good e for his mental state either way, even if he, even if he was 100% sincere in it, and he, and he somehow mentioned in the video in a more offhanded way, didn't make the focus of the video at the first opening salvo of the video, it still would have been, this video still would just not be a good moment for his mental health, if that's where he's at. You didn't have to make this right now. You didn't have to make this apology right now. The thing that I would say you should do, what should have definitely done, is try to, like, give access to people who are trying to figure out who you plagiarized so that fun that H-Bomber guy is going to do um, is, is you know, everything is properly accredited as best they can, they can um, when they hand out that money, and then take the time to do the apology properly if you're not in the mental place to do it, you know? So, like, I'm trying to be empathetic because as someone who has been in a place like that in my life, I don't want to come across as, like, callous. I'm just, what I'm saying is, you know, it's going to harm that for him, too, now. Because he's going to become the villain of the week again. And again, if this isn't earnest, he can go fuck himself even further. But if it is earnest, it just, it makes it worse for everybody, including James. And he's like, just it's trying to like save his career. It feels like, and and if again, if we're taking it at earnest face value, I get it. If you loved this job, um, it sucks to probably come to the understanding that you can't do it anymore. Your career is done. As frankly, I think it deserves to be for everything, and that hurts and it sucks i get it and i get wanting to hold on to what you can but you can't really and and even if you could it, it's a long long process that this video is not going to help all right one other thing too that i meant to say is just like if you really liked this work you would have done the thing that you were passionate about that people that people who do video essays are passionate about you know doing the research I love making videos. Yeah, I have fun doing the costumes and the, you know, the, the editing and all that jazz. I do have fun doing that stuff. But the reason that I write video essays is because I love researching. I love trying to explain things to people. That's fun for me. So if James, you'd liked being, you know, the video presenter or an editor, if those are the things that you liked, you could have teamed up with somebody who maybe didn't like being in front of the camera but loved writing or something like that. There's just numerous ways you could have done the things that you loved without plagiarizing. 
Um, but if your video essays really were your passion, you would have done the part that video essays, essayists love. So it comes across more as, again, just a grift to make money, which what this feels like it is trying to do to just cling on to the last remnants of that. And if I'm being rather frank at the moment, like for some of this to happen at a time where the queer community, the trans community, uh, women generally are being so vilified, especially as our, getting our voices out there as creators, as artists, um, but even more so at a time where our voices just need to be heard when you know our community is under attack, to have a prominent uh, queer voice like James's, who is getting traction in the public mind, like Neil freaking Gaiman and other famous people had mentioned James Summon and had shared his videos, um, to have someone like this, someone like this, especially since James was asked to be like, he kept saying like, I am speaking for the queer community to have that, to become that like arbiter of the queer community to be revealed as a fraud. It makes us all look bad. And it sucks that we live in a society that like lumps us all together and they will like, the, the people who are transphobic, homophobic, sexist will use one person uh, to exemplify the entire community. Um, but, and I don't want to ever be like, you know, one person has to be perfect because it looks bad on the whole community. But James sort of asked for that. And frankly, it just really sucks for the rest of us. Like being frank, while I have been lucky in that, you know, my channel is doing well, my career is doing well, I'm very lucky to have identities, the movie that I'm working on happening, I by no means saying, you know, I'm not um, doing well or privileged in, in many, many regards. Um, it has also been very, very hard for me as a creator to constantly be harassed, be attacked, be lied about, be vilified but from so many corners. Um, it has honestly been a real slog emotionally and sometimes physically to just be a creator to keep focusing on making things while dealing with all of this other stuff this year um and shit like this just does not help that and it has been even harder knowing that you know see watching friends of mine who aren't as lucky as i am um queer creators struggle even more <laughs> and you see someone plagiarize from them um, or to see someone, you know, take, try to stand in as an arbiter of the queer community and then be revealed as a fraud. Hurts us all. Not just the queer community, but even beyond that. And I'm trying to keep this general. I mean, obviously there's an element of me feeling angry just generally for the queer community stuff. And then also I've had my own history with him, which I've talked about in other stuff. Um, and even then I haven't talked about everything. Um, because I don't really want to. I just, it's like, I don't want to go into all the nitty gritty detail of like shit with me and James because it's not helpful at this point. And I know some people are going to claim like, oh, Jesse, you're doing this video to also gain attention or whatever. Like it's the YouTube attention economy nonsense. It's just how it goes. I, you know, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to push back against that other than to say like, I try to be earnest and be like, this really fucking sucks. I'm really kind of upset about it. I don't know. It sucks. Anyways, I just needed to say something because I was just... It was going to be in my mind for all of Christmas, <laughs> and I didn't want to carry it over Christmas. So I'm like, you know what? While I, Before I pack, let me unpack this so I don't have to carry the weight of it <laughs> when I go travel back home. Because heaven knows uh, airline baggage fees are expensive enough. Um, there's me trying to make some humor. Ah, airline humor. I'm like Seinfeld. Eh, anyways. Um, take care of yourselves. Um, and to be very clear, physically and mentally, I wish James nothing but the best. I wish nothing but bad things for his career, especially in this field. Um, angry at this apology video. But physically and mentally, I wish James endless health. Um... And to the rest of you, I hope you have a merry holidays if you um, celebrate any of them. Have a happy new year if you celebrate that. Take care of yourselves. Um, uh, and I'll be back in the new year, I guess. Feels weird to, yeah, it feels weird to do the pitching thing. Anyways, live long and prosper.